بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين على أمور الدنيا والدين وصلى الله تعالى وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome back to our program My American Jihad with me Imam Shamsi Ali in the past few episodes, we talk about understanding jihad by understanding the concept of Islam, that Islam is based on oneness, based on unity. And we mentioned that the concept of unity or oneness in Islam is not only about God, the Almighty. Yes, certainly it is the basis, it is the foundation. Because the, fun, the foundation of faith, of belief system is to believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by declaring la ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also we mentioned that our belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must have social implications. Our faith or belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being is the only God worthy of worship is not only in our sentiments, emotions, or even only in our mind. But more importantly, how to expand this into all segments of our life. The concept of unity, the concept of oneness of Allah, or in Arabic language is called Tawheed, has social implications. And you can see that on every level of human being beings lives a to z in and out when you talk about human character human behavior our akhlaq is built on the basis of believing in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are becoming honest not only because of the legal issue that we follow the law of the land we are becoming honest because we believe that allah is watching us because he is alim and he is khabirun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything that we do. And that basically motivates us to build honesty in life. We are humble to one another and respect one another as human beings, not only because that is socially honorable to do, but more importantly because I do believe that there is only one superior in my life and superiority or supremacy belongs to the one who created me Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I am kind and helpful to my neighbors and friends and brothers and sisters not because for me to be considered a nice or kind person but more importantly because I do believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there watching for me every single thing that I do in life and I want to please my Lord so my faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the oneness of Allah must be translated into social actions. And then we mention about one of the most important basis of oneness in Islam is believing in the oneness of teaching. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent a variety of prophets and messengers in the past from Adam alayhi salatu wassalam down to Nuh alayhi salatu wassalam to Ibrahim alayhi salatu wassalam to Isa or Jesus alayhi salatu wassalam to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is the final prophet. Allah sent them to different nations. Prophet Muhammad was sent to all nations. But there is only one essential teaching. And that essence of teaching is al-Islam. What does it mean al-Islam? Submission to the will and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is very important to understand because sometimes when we come to the issue of religious plurality that there are plural religions we fail to understand that in essence there is only one religion and that is the religion that teaches us to humble ourselves to surrender and to submit ourselves to the almighty allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what we translate into Arabic language. Al-Islam means giving our submission fully to the one who created us. This is what we call Al-Islam. 
So one God, one teaching. Because how it is possible that you have one God and you have many, many teachings? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving one form of teaching to this person and while he is giving another form of teaching to another person, that is simply irrational, unacceptable. Our mind cannot accept that in one hand we believe that there is only one God, then we believe in many, many teachings, certainly not. What we see is possibly the interpretations of people about the God, about God's teaching. But in essence, there is only one teaching. And therefore, Alhamdulillah, in Al-Islam, when you come to the issue of the most fundamental part of the teaching of any religious belief system, is about Allah, our concept is very clear. For example, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ Tell them, O Muhammad, say, O Muhammad, there is only one and unique God, Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique. And the word Ahad represents the oneness of Allah in every angle of the word, every sense of the word. Not only one in number, one to three, but it means one in every aspect of it. In his sifat, in his asma, in his character, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not equal to anybody. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and sent down one teaching. And again, that is the meaning of inna dina indullahi al-Islam. The next one we mentioned about the importance of understanding one Allah, one God, and one humanity. Now I'm not saying one human being, because there are billions of human beings. But one thing you have to understand, that in every single human being, there is what we call humanity. And that humanity has no difference between one person to another person. What does it mean humanity? The most important is our fitra, our purity. That every single human being has the same fitra. Fitrat Allahi allati fatara nasa alayha la tabdila li khalqillah. The fitrah of God, the fitrah, the purity of Allah, on which everyone was created. And that fitrah has been inherently in every one of Allah's servant, in every one of Allah's abd, what we call in Arabic language. Every human being represents the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I may borrow a day of terminology from our Jewish and Christian friends they normally say that every human being is created on God's image now God's image is a representation of God's fitra God's purity in other words when you see any human being see him or her as the representations of God's purity because one of the most important signs of Allah's greatness the greatness of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being represented, represented in our life as human beings. And yourself, don't you see? See the, the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go to the mirror and see your faces and you imagine how Allah created us in a such beautiful way. So my point here that every single human being represents the same thing. Representing the purity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, if you think about human inclinations, that we have interest in life, every single human being has the same thing. I'm a Muslim, I want peace in life. I want tranquility. I want happiness. I want, you know, prosperity. I want justice. Don't you think that our Christian friends or Jewish friends or Buddhist friends or Hindus all those people want the same thing. When the Muslim wants peace, I'm sure every single human being, no matter what faith that they believe in, they want peace in life. If the Muslims want proper prosperity or happiness, I'm sure every single human being, regardless of their religious and cultural and ethnic or racial association, they all want the same thing. We want peace, happiness, and joy in life. Now, if we know this, then it brings us into a conclusion 
that human being basically is one in terms of humanity. And that's why, once again, we Muslims believe very strongly that every single human being basically belongs to the same family. Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, that we created you from a male and a female, wa ja'annakum shu'uban wa qaba'ilan, and made you into many nations and tribes. So if you see the differences, diversity that you have at the moment, that is because Allah made us into it. But we came from the same father and mother, Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve, min dhakar wa untha. And Allah makes us into many nations and tribes. And not all of a sudden, some become Africans, become Europeans, become Asians, Middle Easterns, Hispanic. All these are Allah's made. We don't want it. Who made me Asian? I didn't make myself an Asian. Allah who made me. Because I do believe that Allah who made me Asian, I am proud of that. Because He is the one who chose it for me. He's the one who chose my human race. I didn't choose my human race. Those who are white, you don't choose it. You don't have any intervention to become a white. Those who are African, you didn't have any intervention to become an African. And all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you Africans, South Asians, Asians, Europeans. That's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us. So we came from the same family. And therefore, the last point about the oneness of human family it's about how evil it is when someone has become arrogant simply because of the skin color. Not only that it is, it is um, arrogance, it is jahalat at the same time, it is ignorant at the same time. And it is evil, really, inherently evil. Because the first ever racist in the creation of God was devil, Iblis, Lanatullah Ali. And therefore we have to accept the oneness of human family one god one teaching one human family or one humanity the last point i'd like to mention in this particular point is a part of our jihad again for me this is a part of my jihad to understand that there is on the concept of oneness the concept of unity or tawhid is to understand that our destiny in life is one Everybody is going to the same direction. We came from the same direction and then we evolve, rotate. Our life is about rotations. Came from one direction and going back after circling this life to the same direction. That's what is being expressed by a Muslim when someone dies, for example, and they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Verily we belong to Allah. We came from Allah. He created us. And now we become humans and we are living our life now with all ups and downs. Sometimes we are happy, sometimes we are suffering, sometimes we are sick, sometimes we are healthy, sometimes we are weak, sometimes we are so powerful. This is the station of life. But at the end of the day, there is only one destiny. What is the destiny? We all go back to the same destiny and that is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is one of the most important aspect of the oneness. That there is no different. Either you are black, white, brown, Asian, Europeans, all of you go to the same one destiny, purpose. One end, the end of life. What is the end of life? The end of life is to die and then going to the real life called the life of Akhirah. And the life of Akhirah is the real life. This dunya life, worldly life, is so important. I had never meant that this dunya is not important. It's very important. But this dunya is not made to be the destiny. We are not going to stay forever. We are not going to live forever. Kullu nafsan dha'iqatul maud. Each soul is going to taste the death. Kullu man alayha fan. Every single thing on this planet is going to perish. Human beings are going to end. So we are going to die. And that is the destiny. And so once again, believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitates, requires us to believe that our destiny is one. That is, we are all going to the same direction. The different possibility, and I'm going to talk this later on, the difference is how to get into that place. For Muslims, to get into that place happily, 
successfully, there's only one way. And that way is to take our responsibility seriously in this life. Muhammad sallallahu had come not to save us, but to bring a means for us to save ourselves. Our safety belongs to our own responsibility. And even the daughter of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi he reminded him, he reminded her, Fatima. He said to Fatima radallahu anha, Oh Fatima, struggle to save yourself. Struggle to save yourself. Because I cannot save you in the day of judgment. Prophet Muhammad said it to his own daughter. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had come not to save us because he cannot. Who can save us? It is our responsibility. And you take this life seriously. You take the teaching seriously. You take the Quran seriously. You take the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam seriously. By taking that seriously, you are saving your life. Because our destiny is a two possibilities. Either Nar or Jannat. And inshallah, hopefully all of us are going to enter into Jannat. And for that, there is no way or any other way except that we have to take this teaching responsibly. Following Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, following Kitabullah, following the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So once again, the concept of unity is not only believing in one God, but also believing in one teaching, believing in one humanity, but also believing in one destiny. And that destiny is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and guide us except from all of us. Looking forward to see you again next time with our program, My American Jihad. With me, Imam Shamsi Ali. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.